Britain is leaving the EU, but it's unlikely that they would be as quick to give up their love of curry, which some scientists have even called an addiction. Opinions are still divided over whether it's because the spicy flavors physically stimulate the senses or if it's just the idea that brings about a natural high. Either way, the British aren't the only ones to have an appetite for Eastern cuisine, and this week we focus on satisfying our own curry cravings. I'm having one of those days and craving the old-fashioned food I remember from my childhood. I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise that I'm actually craving a curry. And when I say curry, I don't mean a butter chicken or a korma with tandoori naan. I'm talking about hot and spicy Durban curry served with hot rotis. I'm going to get into the kitchen to prepare a potato and pea curry, lamb and cabbage, and then chili cheese rotis. Let's get cooking. I need some fresh herbs for the rotis parsley and coriander. See you back in the kitchen. I'm going to use these fresh herbs for the roti, but first I'm going to get started on the lamb. It's one of my childhood favorites, lamb cooked with cabbage, sunflower oil going into the pan, a cinnamon stick and bay leaf. I'd say about two or three pieces. I'm using a tiny piece of cinnamon as well. Fry those spices until they're fragrant. You can see the cinnamon stick starts to sizzle around the edges. And next, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds. The seeds start to splatter. Add the chopped onion. Stir that around. Season with salt. A teaspoon and a half of coarse salt. A few curry leaves going in. Once the onions turn light golden brown, they dissolve into the sauce, thickening the gravy and adding flavor. If your onions remain translucent, they stay quite chunky and add a sweetness to the curry sauce, which feels like you've added a bit of mango chutney or some sort of fruit chutney. It's not what we're looking for in a Durban curry. The onions are golden brown, push them over to the side of the pan. Ginger and garlic paste. Going on top, this is homemade ginger and garlic paste. I've added a touch of turmeric to the paste as a preservative, so you'll notice it's slightly yellow. Then two tablespoons of red chili powder. I like my food quite spicy. A quick stir. In goes the lamb. Traditionally, it was made using the breast of lamb, but I prefer using the chops slightly fatty and it's also got bone which adds so much flavor and stir that to coat. Scraping the bottom of the pan with a wooden spoon, don't be in a hurry to add water, that's when you ruin the flavor. Cumin, coriander and garam masala, a teaspoon of each going in. A large pinch of turmeric as well and stir the spices through. I've roasted these spices already, and that's the reason I add them on top of the sealed meat. You don't need to fry them for too long. Boiled water going in. Once the bubbling subsided and the sauce simmers down for about a minute, you'll find you get quite a smooth curry sauce forming. And this is when you know you've fried the onion to perfection. I leave the lamb to simmer until it's about halfway done. Cover the pot with a tight-fitting lid. And I'm going to get started on the potato and pea curry. Need a pan for this. I'm using a skillet. Turn up the heat. Sunflower oil into the pan. And for this recipe, the first whole spice going in, some mustard seeds. About half a teaspoon. It's starting to splatter. Some cumin seeds. Some finely chopped onions going into the pan. Next, about a teaspoon of salt. And some curry leaves. Stir that through. And fry the onion until it's golden brown. Some fresh garlic on top of the onion. Stir that around and fry for fragrance. Half a tablespoon of red chili powder. And work quite quickly. Stir that through. Next, in go the potatoes. 
butter to coat in the fried paste. You can see the onions turn quite dark brown in colour. Now pour in some boiled water. Add some ground cumin and coriander. And turmeric as well. Work that into the sauce. Cover the pan with a tight fitting lid and simmer until the potatoes are just about tender. Potatoes coming along nicely, starting to break around the edges and they look perfect. And just remember, when you're making a potato dish, always use floury potatoes and not the waxy variety. They won't melt down into the curry and absorb those flavors. Make a well in the center, Add the chopped tomatoes. I like adding them to the center of the pan so I don't overwork the potatoes. Use the wooden spoon to break the tomatoes up. Lastly, the peas. These are just frozen peas. They're bright green in color and they cook quite quickly as well. You don't have to mix them in too much. The lid goes on. Let that simmer for about three to five minutes on a very low heat. And then that's the potato curry done. Let's check on the lamb. I'm sure it should be about halfway cooked now. The lamb simmer down. Add tomatoes. Next, baby cabbage, very thinly sliced. I quite like using baby cabbage. It's milder in flavor. You also don't have to blanch baby cabbage. You can add it straight to the curry. Stir the cabbage through. Safe will take about 10 to 15 minutes to cook down and almost melt into the sauce. Cover the pan once again, add a little water if necessary and leave that to simmer. Let's take a quick peek at the potato. That's perfect. I'm going to move this off the heat and let's get started with the rotis. Get the kettle on. First ingredient, cake flour, to that, salt. Now cheese can be quite salty, so season this lightly. This is almost a cheese and chili parata. When we were younger, my grand used to say this was her version of the Indian pizza. Bring the water up to the boil and make sure it's super hot when you add it to the flour. That's the secret to making good rotis. I need about a cup of boiled water. to the flour. Work the flour and the water together until you get a crumbly mix. Doesn't look much like a roti dough, but it comes together quite quickly. Add sunflower oil. I think it's now time for me to use my hands. Just slip my ring off. And then work the ingredients using your hands into a soft dough. And if you are a beginner, start out with just a cup of flour until you get the hang of these. So once the dough is quite smooth, use a knife, slice that in half, and then into quarters. Take each piece, roll these into balls, don't flour the work surface at this stage. If you do, your roti is going to be quite hard and dry. Now for the filling, the chili cheese part of the pizza, as my gran calls it. Got a bit of green chili, two teaspoons of crushed garlic, and the fresh herbs from the garden. And I'm using a combination of fresh parsley and coriander. Use a pair of scissors. Not too finely, some green chili, just a touch and two teaspoons of garlic. Use a spoon and lightly work that together. That's about ready. Now to stuff these. Just flatten them out gently. Always thinner around the edges and slightly thicker in the center. If you can't do that, you can always flatten it on a work surface. You do get quite used to working with this. There we have it. I'm going to use my fingers for this filling now 
and just grab a bit of that cheese and garlic and squish it into the center and then just gather up those edges it's almost like a magic trick and look the cheese has disappeared on to the next one if you are taking your time working with this dough cover it with a slightly damp cloth to prevent it from drying out you could also spice this up with a bit of extra chili if you like and some red onion too time to roll them out first I'm gonna need some flour pop the first one over a little more flour and roll those out cheese is starting to show through and I'm actually pressing slightly harder on the right hand side this gets the dough to turn around that's the last one done and let's get the first chili cheese roti onto the pan I'm using my fingertips it's the pretty old-fashioned way of doing it the roti starts to bubble up and flip that over a light drizzle of melted butter flip it over again really does start to puff up that's puffed up beautifully and if Indian superstitions anything to go by my mother-in-law is going to love me slide that off the pan let's have a look and that's the gooey cheese on the inside time to plate the feast the temperatures have been cooler in Johannesburg and I've been craving some hot Durban style curry definitely not restaurant curry I've made a potato and pea curry lamb and cabbage and chili cheese garlic rotis the way my gran used to make them I hope you enjoy these curry recipes as much as I do